to Calvary Where Jesus bled And died for me I see his wounds His hands, his feet My Savior
soft in my heart and break me apart. I need you to open my eyes and see that you're shaping. Trust what you say That you're good And your love is great And I'm broken inside I need you to soften my heart, to break me apart. I need you to pierce through the dark and cleanse every part. what you say that you're good and your love is great I'm broken inside I give you my love time may be weak your spirit is strong in me My flesh may fail My God, you never will Time may be weak But your spirit is strong in me My flesh may fail My God, you never will what you say that you're good your love is great I'm broken inside I give you my Hey, what's up, Young Nag Youth? This is Pastor Oh Young back at it again for this week's sermon. I hope you guys are doing well. I miss you guys all, and I hope and pray that you guys are blessed by listening to the Word of God together. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless our time. Father, thank you for this day as we gather as one church. And uh, despite physically we're away from each other and we can't gather at our church building, Lord, we know that we are all in this together as one body of Christ and as brothers and sisters for the kingdom promise. So Lord, I pray that you bless our time together um, as, as we reflect on your word. Would you uh, remind us that we are deeply loved by our Father in heaven and that we ought to love one another as you have loved us first. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So today's scripture 
comes from Numbers chapter 9, verse 1 through 14. Again, today's scripture comes from Numbers chapter 9, verse 1 through 14. Pastor Kevin kicked us off last week with a great, great start for the book of Numbers. And I know it's the book of Numbers and a lot of people freak out about it because I get it. There are a bunch of numbers and uh, about people and the census and a bunch of names that you can't pronounce and all those things. But I really, really want to encourage you today that this book is filled with so many spiritual meaning pointing to Jesus Christ and how we ought to live and how we ought to do church together. So again, today's scripture comes from Numbers chapter 9, verse 1 through 14. And I'm going to read it for us. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time, celebrate it at, celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight of the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, We have become unclean because of dead body. But why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover, but they are to do it on the fourteenth day of the second month at twilight, They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if anyone who is ceremonially ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sin. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native born. Amen. So today's scripture is concerning the Passover. And I know the word Passover is sometimes foreign to us because it is a Jewish holiday that we no longer practice as Christians, but it still holds a great spiritual meaning for all of us. So the origin of Passover goes to the book of Exodus. And I don't know how well versed you guys are in the book of Exodus, but I'm sure you guys know the 10 plagues. And the 10th one is what? The death of the firstborn. Basically, God uh, tells Moses that, hey, listen, I'm going to send the final plague and unleash it to the Egyptians so that after this, they will let you uh, leave the land and go to the promised land. And every single firstborn in Egypt will perish. But this is how you avoid it. You are to go and slaughter a lamb and put its blood all over the doorpost of your house so that the spirit of the plague will pass over your house and no one will die. And the Israelites do that. Obviously, lo and behold, Nobody perishes during the 10th plague. And and God wants His people as they come out of slavery and go into the promised land to remember this beautiful day and celebrate it. So, Passover. What is the point of Passover? And what do you do during Passover? Based on the scripture today and based on what we know about Passover, there are three things, guys, that I want you to really know and reflect on. The first one is who, second one is what, and the third one is who. So it's very easy, right? Who, what, who. WWW, three dubs, triple dubs, right? Who are we celebrating? What are we celebrating? And who participates in the celebration? I'm going to start with the who are we celebrating part. Obviously, we celebrate God and what He has done, right? And what God has shown about Himself in the time of Passover. During the Passover, as as I said, God is unleashing His final plague 
in order to rescue his people. And that shows his character of justice. It shows his character of chasing after his people. No matter how dire the circumstances are, God is saying, I'm going to get my people into the promised land and out of slavery because I have greater in store for them. And the second one is, what do we celebrate? We celebrate the miracle that God has performed, that those who put their lives and hope in the blood of the Lamb that God has commanded to put on your doorpost, everyone survived and everyone experienced the deliverance of God. So in the Passover, you experience the deliverance of God and His faithfulness shown in the plague that set God's people free. Third one, who participates in the celebration. See, this is an important part in this uh, in this chapter today because the Israelites, they thought, well, it's for the clean people only. And it's for the Israelites by blood only. But guess what God is telling them? No, 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 no. It is also for people who are ceremonially unclean. It is also for people who share no bloodline with you guys. It's for the foreigners as well. In a, in a sense, everyone that God is making an invitation to gets to participate in the ceremony of Passover. What does that mean? What does that mean for us as Christians? Guys, we know that Jesus Christ was the ultimate Passover lamb. Because when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says that for Christ, the Passover lamb has been sacrificed. I'm going to read it again. Uh, for Christ, the Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Meaning by Jesus dying on the cross. We are given the opportunity, regardless of your genealogy, regardless of how clean or unclean, regardless of how religiously committed or not committed you are. If you have the blood of Jesus Christ at the doorpost of your heart, you're celebrating this day of victory together. You're celebrating this Passover miracle and Passover deliverance together. And that's the beauty of this chapter. And that's the beauty of the book of Numbers. God is teaching His people and God is reminding His people that this is what my people are known for. My people are known for deliverance. My people are known for victory. And as you go about this wilderness time and march into the promised land, remember the victory that has been won for you and shown to you. Guys, as Pastor Kevin so beautifully illustrated um, last week, the book of Numbers, the translation of it doesn't do the right justice. It doesn't do justice for what it was actually written for. In the Hebrew translation, as Pastor Kevin mentioned last week, it is translated uh, or directly translated as in the wilderness or in the desert. And there's a great significance um, regarding the word wilderness or the word desert in the Bible. A wilderness is, is, a, is a phase or a place that is known for many negative things. Basically think about the time of uncertainty, the time of nothingness, the time of emptiness, and it's often related to lostness and death. And that's exactly what wilderness is being portrayed as in the Bible. And I understand that we're no longer in that uh, wilderness, physically speaking. But I feel like spiritually, emotionally, and communally, we're in that wilderness phase right now, if you think about it. Because when we go out into the world right now, well, there's an immediate danger of COVID-19. When we think about this reopening and gathering as one church together, there is that uncertainty of what is it going to look like? Are we even gonna be back to normal? And what does, what, what does normal mean? even look like and there's this lostness of what am i going to do during this lockdown thing i don't know how to spend my time well and i don't know uh, what to do especially when you're when you're done with school as many of you guys are uh, finishing up school right now see all of those things sort of put us in that place in wilderness and god is reminding his people i get it you're lost right now I get it, you're confused and you're uncertain and you're hesitant right now, but I am going to remind you with the celebration of Passover that victory has been won, victory is promised, and victory will be continuously won as you go on this journey 
with me. So that's why I really want to give you this encouraging message today that um, the Passover time is so much more than just a Jewish holiday that we no longer celebrate, but it is actually the reminder of what Jesus has done on the cross and what God has promised His people. And as I was uh, sort of preparing this series for the book of Numbers, I get it, as I said, you know, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. We call it the graveyard of devotional and QT Bible reading plans. But as you come to the book of Numbers, I, my prayer is that you will see it as so much more than just, oh, just religious texts with all these religious mandates and the names I can't pronounce and all these numbers of how many people in each tribe. But what I wish we could take away from the book of Numbers, it is um, that God is actually including us and inviting us into this beautiful celebration that we will get to heaven. heaven. Here's the thing. Um, when I talk about Christian faith, and I, I receive this question and inquiry a lot from, you know, Christians as well as non-Christians, like, oh, why is it, why is there so much emphasis on these religious mandate and the spirit of religiosity and all these Pharisaic stuff and hypocrisy? And what, what's up with all these so many, uh, like, religious, you know, practices that you force people to participate in? You know, at least in my generation, guys, like, there was this, uh, there's just a phase where people were all saying, oh, it's not the religion, it is the relationship. Or oh, people call it the religion, but I call it relationship. God is not about religion, God is about relationship. And, and I get the sentiment that is behind it, but here's the thing, I, I really wish we would receive a different kind of perspective during this numbers. I get it. Relationship is the most important aspect of Christian faith because it is about having the right relationship and saving relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But because we have the relationship with God, we get to participate in these religious ceremonies and celebrations. And here's the thing, it is about the relationship. And I'm going to argue that the important relationships that, in your, that are in your life include so many mandated practices and dates and time and all these things. And, and check this out. You know, when you have a um, birthday coming up for your, for your best friend, let's say, I realized, especially in high school and college, people are inundated with so many celebratory messages and, and, and practices during their birthdays, right? Like, I see it on Facebook all the time. People post collages of each other on Facebook when it's birthday, and people put all kinds of Instagram stories during their birthday. Um, people prepare surprise birthday parties, and I don't know if you guys do this, but you might make a TikTok move, a dance video for your friend. And whatever it is, we celebrate that day. Why? Because we have a deep, intimate relationship with somebody. How about, how about your parents, right? You celebrate your parents' birthdays. You celebrate Mother's Day, Father's Day. For Christmas, you prepare a nice gift for them. For every new year, you, you know, put on a nice little Korean traditional clothing and you bow before them to celebrate them, right? And how about if you're in a romantic relationship, especially one that leads into marriage? I mean, I've seen so many people around me that celebrate the first month of their dating and the 100th day and the 200th day and the first year and a thousandth day and the, and the second year, third year, um, Pepero Day, Valentine's Day, White Day, and dating anniversary, engagement anniversary, wedding anniversary, all these dates and the celebrations and events that you prepare, again, why? Because you have that great intimacy with somebody in your life. And that's exactly what Passover is all about. Because God has invited us into His family, we have this great relationship and intimacy with Him, and out of that relationship, we get to worship God and celebrate His victory and faithfulness in our lives together. In a sense, that's what um, Christian faith uh, stays apart and it separates itself from all the other religions because all the other religions are basically reminding you that you need to do X, Y, and Z and so that if you have done enough of it and if you deemed yourself good enough at the end of your life, you may or may not have relationship with your God or whatever you've been looking for. But what we believe and what we have accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ is that because God has given us this relationship 
and invited us into his kingdom first, we get to participate and we ought to participate in these religious activities and celebrations so that we will always remind ourselves that we belong to him. He belongs to us and we are one in Jesus Christ together. So guys, that's why I pray that we will have a special meeting of what uh, Sunday worship looks like. We have a special meaning of what Christmas and Easter and all these important religious holidays look like. It is so much more than these annoying religious mandates that we have to keep. It is actually a great celebration of victory that Jesus has achieved on the cross and in His resurrection. So guys, even as we gather uh, through online means for Sunday worship for for some duration of time. I don't know how much longer, but as we gather together, my prayer is that we will come with full excitement and joy of celebrating celebrating Jesus Christ together. So as you read the book of Numbers, these are the reminders that I want you to take away. You know, um, if you if you read the, to, if you read throughout the chapter. What uh, God is telling you is, you know what? For the unclean people, there is room for them to celebrate Passover. How about the foreigners? There's room for them as well to celebrate Passover together. And that's exactly who we were. We were unclean before the Lord, yet God invites us. We are foreigners before the Lord, yet God invites us into His celebration. And my prayer is that as people who are rescued by the grace of Jesus Christ, we will go outside and welcome other people who were deemed unclean, invite other people who are considered foreign in the kingdom of God so that they will enjoy and celebrate the blood of the Lamb together as one family. So guys, as one family, as one body of Jesus Christ, I really, really miss you. I wish we will see each other again. But until then, let's go through this wilderness time in faithfulness and courage together so that when we get together, it's going to be an amazing day of celebration. God bless you all and let's pray. Father, thank you for this day as we reflect on the day of Passover and the invitation that has been made for even those who are deemed unclean and foreign to the kingdom of God. So Lord Jesus, uh, we know that we too are invited to your house and to your family. And in practicing that, we will not going to take it as just annoying or mundane religious uh, obligation, but actually an opportunity to celebrate your glory and celebrate the relationship we get to have because you saved us first. So God, I pray that you give us new courage and new reminder, new encouragement today, and we'll go through this wilderness season well in faith. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.